Welcome to this episode about T1 Scope, the oscilloscope or logic analyzer for your software. Before we get to T1 Scope, let's take a closer look at the general setup. T1 consists of the T1 host software, which runs on a Windows based PC, and the T1 target software, our embedded software component, which gets added to your existing software. The T1 host software and the T1 target software are communicating with each other over a target interface, which is pretty much any existing interface such as CAN, CANFD, FlexRay or Ethernet. This interface gets connected to the interface hardware, for example our USB to CAN adapter named U2C or a third party interface. Now, T1 is a pure software solution. So there's no need for any special tracing hardware or any dedicated tracing interface. Think of a gearbox ECU surrounded by oil running in the car. There's no way you could ever connect any Nexus or DAP or JTAG to that. When your processor is an Infineon RX, T1 doesn't even require an emulation device. The production device will perfectly do. This allows you to use the production version of your embedded hardware in any environment. Let me show you some other aspects in which T1 is rather unique. Firstly, the overhead. Software instrumentation comes with overhead and we manage to get it down to something between 0.2 to 0.4% per core for typical embedded applications. T1 has replaced many in-house timing solutions at several big automotive suppliers. Each time we integrate T1, we initially leave the old solution in place so that we can measure its overhead. In most cases, we see something like 10 times the overhead of T1 scope. The second quite unique aspect relates to communication overhead. When people hear the term tracing, they tend to think of high bandwidth. Well, this is certainly not true for T1. T1 actually does not have any bandwidth requirements. From the very beginning, T1 was designed to deal with very limited bandwidth. Want to hear some numbers? In many projects, T1 consumes as little as one single CAN message every 10 milliseconds for the communication with the T1 host software. This is one of the reasons why T1 is such a good fit for any setup. You can use T1 on your desk, in the lab or even in the final environment, for example the vehicle. An existing interface will serve as the T1 target interface and the impact of T1 on the existing communication is minimal. Let's take a look at T1 scope itself. To start with, I will be using this vehicle and energy control unit, PowerPC based, and it will be connected through a 500 kilobit CAN bus. This is the U2C, the USB to CAN adapter, which will function as the interface hardware. Alternatively, I could use a PCAN interface or any vector box. What you see here is the T1 host software with the T1 scope view here in the center. It shows us a time axis and on this axis here we see all the tasks and interrupts lined up sorted by their priority with the highest priority here at the top. Using the mouse wheel and shift and control I can now scroll and zoom, navigate through the trays and have a closer look at certain runtime situations. For example, this one here. So what is it that we see? We see the task states and the interrupt states color coded over the time. So the colors indicate this, the states at a certain point in time. A bright color indicates ready state, dark color running state. So let me run you through this situation here. We had a similar task activation at this point. Due to the higher priority, this task got executed first, terminates here, the other one had to wait. Then the DRVCU 10 millisecond task, you can see the name here, 
starts at this point in time, gets interrupted by the can interrupt here, gets preempted by another high priority task at this point in time, resumes and finally terminates. At a glance, you understand what the scheduling of your system looks like. And this is the right flight level for scheduling analysis. Timing analysis in general and specifically solving timing problems is a strict top-down process. If, for example, you're facing failed task activations due to an overloaded system, do not start by optimizing certain functions. Understand first what the scheduling looks like, so what the timing looks like on the level of task and interrupts. This approach makes sure you're spending your valuable time in the right spot. Also make sure to look at the real system. It is very likely that any model-based approach or simulation will show a quite different behavior compared to the real embedded system. I would like to underline this point with a practical example, a real customer project I described in my book, Embedded Software Timing. It's available in English, German, Chinese and Korean. The project leader of an automotive ECU called us asking for help. His system was highly loaded, which is something he found out using some background task counter. Here you see the very first trace we downloaded. When the customer looked at it, he said, wait a minute, there is something wrong with the instrumentation. This interrupt here should occur only once every 10 milliseconds. So we checked the instrumentation and it looked good. A few minutes later, we found the real cause of the problem. The interrupt was configured to fire at level rather than at edge as intended. Now, the software was implemented in a way that this misconfiguration and the resulting high number of ISRs caused no functional defect. It worked just fine despite the high load. Once we reconfigured the interrupt to trigger on edge, it occurred once every 10 milliseconds as intended. The customer gained more than 10% CPU load within minutes and was very happy. There's one important lesson I learned from this project and that is don't ignore reality. Look at the real system. Just imagine the customer would have had used scheduling simulation or some model-based approach for his timing analysis. He would never have found the real problem. He would probably still be driving around with thousands of useless interrupts every second. Back to T1 scope. In addition to the trace view here in the center, you have a timing information view here on the right. It comes with a tree control that contains all the task and interrupts. And for each task and interrupt, you get all the timing parameters such as core execution time, delta time, gross execution time, response time, jitter and so forth. For each timing parameter, you get a minimum, maximum, average value, some statistical data here and a distribution curve here at the bottom. The minimum and maximum values, they come with hyperlinks, which take you directly to the corresponding location in the trace. On the left side, you see the target control, which allows you to control the T1 target software and also informs you about its state. Currently, we're tracing, and if I now hit the download button here, we will download a new snapshot trace. In addition to that, you get a full REST API, which perfectly suits any automated test environment. So far, we looked at interrupts and tasks only. How about going into more detail? Is it possible to trace, measure and visualize runnables and functions? And how about data accesses and data flow? The answer is simple. T1 supports all of this and even more. In the episode about T1 Flex, we instrument runnables, functions and even code fragments on the fly, meaning that the software gets instrumented while it executes from Flash. No need to instrument the code and compile again. <laughs> Sounds like magic, 
Well, it certainly looks like magic when you watch it. This ECU here is a single core ECU. But what about multi core? Well, let me show you a screenshot from our website. This is a trace from the second generation RX, which we put on our website the day the six core RX was released. You can tell we have a very close relationship with Infineon. The screenshot nicely shows how T1 captures the scheduling on all six cores and provides synchronized traces. This means that any vertical line represents the same point in time on all cores. These green arrows here are T1 Flex data flow stopwatches visualizing cross-core communication. By the way, on our website you will also find the information about supported processes, compilers, operating systems and communication interfaces. How about processes and threads in a POSIX system? Well, POSIX will be dealt with in a separate episode about T1 POSIX. The quick summary is, yes, we do support it, and you can even mix the two worlds, the classical Artos world and the POSIX world with operating systems like QNX or Linux. Again, synchronized traces as for multicore are supported. Let me finish this episode about T1 Scope with a minor feature which I personally find very helpful and use quite often. I found that many T1 users don't know about it, so maybe this is a good opportunity to spread it a bit. What I'm talking about is the raster. You can enable it here. And what you get is a visual helper for analyzing periodical behavior in your software. You can just grab the edges here and move the helper around your trace. You can also alter the period. I'm going to set it to 250 microseconds because this is actually what the customer told me the period of this interrupt here would be. So let's take a closer look at the timing parameters first. So uh, that's this interrupt here and the delta time, aha, the average, yes, that's true, the average is 250 microseconds, but we obviously have two values we see, and only two values, a 220 and a 280 microseconds delta time. And uh, with a visual helper here, you can very nicely see what's going on. So we, obviously, we have two interleaved interrupts so they, they are all alternating i should say um, so every second core execution time of this interrupt is high and every other second is low um, and always the high the high execution ones the interrupts they have a strict period of 500 microseconds compared to each other and also the short execution time interrupts so you see this is a well a minor helper but it very uh, easily and nicely helps you to analyze the periodical behavior of certain events in your trace. So this was an introduction to T1 scope. I mentioned many timing parameters and if you would like to find out more about these you've got two options. The book Embedded Software Timing describes them in great detail and gives lots of examples and how-tos. Alternatively you will find an overview on our timing posters, which you can download for free as a PDF. Or you give us a call and we will be happy to send you your own hard copy. T1 Scope is only one component of T1, so check out the other episodes to learn more about how T1 can help you to efficiently develop safe and reliable embedded systems. Thank you.